So as we did for the sales and collection process, it's a good idea to have a general purpose model that we can use for the purchase and payments process, or as a lot of people will call it, the expenditure cycle. I've started a new document and told uh, Visio that I want to use the UML template. So if you want to use a, an automated tool, uh, there's a list of possible tools out there that you can use and uh, use for a short period of time for free, and some are actually free for extended use as well, uh, that you can see under resources on Blackboard. Now, let's say I've got my basic purchase payment process. Well, so one of the uh, basic classes we want to have is our purchase class. So we'll name that purchase. And we'll set that up. And once I have a class in place that I like, uh, what I'll do is just copy it over and over again. Let's go ahead and increase the size of the text there and make it a little bit wider. And just keep in mind in Visio, the class shows up with the three sections here, one for the class name, which is all we're working with right now. The second section would be to add attributes, uh, which we would do typically when we start thinking about getting our class model together for database purposes. And then the third would be the various actions that can be taken on that class. So anyway, we're just worried about the name of the class right now, so I'll go ahead and copy that. And then we have another class down here that would be our cash disbursements. And since we're since I used a plural for that, we'll go ahead and uh, use a plural for the purchases. All right, so I've got cash disbursements, I've got purchases, and I can go ahead and make that a little bit wider again to fit cash disbursements in. Now, those are my events. And remember, every class model in an accounting system context is going to follow the REA model. So what are the resources that we have? Well, we're going to have some kind of inventory or product that we're selling. So here we can uh, call it inventory. And then uh, we will also have the cash account that we're going to eventually pay from. Next we have the agents that we're working with. And for the most part, we're going to have an employee or someone acting on behalf of the organization. So you can uh, think uh, about the uh, some of the examples we've looked at already where we actually had a business partner uh, making purchases on our behalf. And then finally, we'll have a supplier or a vendor. Uh, typically, you'll see them referred to as vendors. But vendor supplier is fine. And I'll stretch that one out so we can see it. All right, so now we've got our six basic classes. So the next thing we want to do is start setting up our associations. And to do that, we can click on our association tool here, drag one out into the workspace, and start connecting. So we'll make our first one, we'll connect inventory to purchases and then I'll go ahead and change the uh, uh, place where the bends take place and we can change uh, well we don't need to give this association a name if we were going to use this model to actually start building a database some of these UML model tools and Visio is one of them that can actually uh, work with your database tool to generate a database for you. Uh, in this case, we're just worried about what the multiplicities are. So for end one, our multiplicity would be one to many. Remember, uh, we can have many purchase, many items purchased in one purchase. And then end two 
would be zero to many because we may have inventory items that never sell. And then we're going to actually erase the name of these association ends uh, because that's the way our notation works for the modeling we're putting together. So now we click OK and we've got our inventory to purchases set up as a many to many relationship with the appropriate minimum multiplicities on each side of the relationship. So here I'll go ahead and uh, make the line a little bit thicker so it's easier to see. Click OK and now I can just copy and start pasting that. And we'll see here, we'll uh, connect purchases to employees. We will connect, and that relationship is going to be zero to many on the purchases side and one to one on the employee side. And we'll have similarly a connection between or an association between our vendor and purchases. That is zero to many on the purchases side, one to one on the vendor slash supplier side. All right. So now we're going to create our links between cash disbursements and our cash account. And since I already see I had the multiplicity set up kind of the way I wanted, I'd switch the ends I was using. Uh, so that I have the one dot dot one on the cash side and the zero dot dot star on the cash disbursement side. For cash disbursements, I also have a relationship between the cash disbursements and my employees and a similar relationship between my vendor slash supplier and cash disbursements. So I end up with a model that's uh, pretty straightforward here and I'll finalize it by adding one more association between cash disbursements and purchases, our two key events. And in this case the multiplicity, well, we're not quite sure what it's going to be. So we can leave that indeterminate. And we'll just put a little question mark at each end. And the reason for this is that the multiplicity is going to depend on the business rules, as we've seen in some of our different examples. All right, so we now have a model that suits our purposes for getting started walking into a business. Now, if we look at a retail organization, a retail store, for example, well, the purchase and the delivery of the goods take place right at the same time. Now sometimes stores will uh, extend uh, you know, credit not too much anymore, you know, put it on account so that you make the payment later. In a lot of cases the purchase, the delivery of the goods, and the cash disbursement all take place at the same time in one transaction. So we might even collapse purchases and cash disbursements into one event. However, other cases such as uh, manufacturing businesses that do a lot of activity with business partners or even uh, a vendor for a retail store for example the Frito-Lay or the uh, soft drink vendors 
will come to the store. The store makes purchases from them. Um, uh, the goods are delivered at some point uh, in the future, possibly. And then the vendors are paid later. So many different ways that the purchasing cycle, the expenditure cycle can work, but this is a good basic model to start with that gives you an understanding of uh, how it might take place.